Thank you for having me here anyway, and for the opportunity to talk about the, how we work against trafficking in, in, in human beings, especially for sexual purposes in Sweden. My name is Jonas Trolle and I work uh, as a superintendent at Stockholm City Police Surveillance Unit. And uh, for six years I was working at the section against trafficking. Uh, but today I, I'm operational head of, um, of uh, surveillance and I work with different kind of surveillance today. Uh, criminal areas uh, such as narcotics, weapons, robbery, murder, etc. But I'm still involved in, in in, in some trafficking cases and I have the responsibility in order to de de decrease the number of, of uh, girls in street prostitution in Stockholm. I'm, uh, I'm also lecturing in this subject and I have had a, a course at the Stockholm National, the Swedish National Police Academy for a couple of years. Uh, I will divide, divide my uh, speech in uh, different areas. I will talk a little bit about the background, uh, a little bit about the buyers, uh, best practice, uh, and I will continue by describing the organizers and the victims. And uh, I will also talk about cooperation and the, uh, the, the, that it's very important to cooperate with the different authorities within the country. <clears throat> Okay, the background. Trafficking for, uh, in human beings for sexual pur purposes was quite unknown in Sweden until the year of 2000 or something like that. Of course, we had prostitution in Sweden. For example, back in the 70s, it was uh, 3,000 in prostitution, and we had uh, over 500 brothels in Sweden back in the 70s. Uh, but trafficking with people from other countries was quite unknown before the year of 2000, I would say. Uh, today we estimate that between three, four hundred women are trafficked to Sweden, and it's less than it was when, when I started. When I started, we estimated the number between four up to six hundred. Uh, the victims that tend to come from Estonia, Poland, Romania and Russia, but there are also a few from Hungary, Bulgaria, Thailand, Nigeria, Slovakia, Czech Republic and from different countries in Latin America. Uh, in, these of, of, in each of these countries of origin, the victims tend to come from minority ethnic groups or marginalized groups with families with so large social problems and, and that so, sort of things. The point of entry is most from uh, the Swedish seaport on foot or by car coming from Estonia, Denmark, Germany, Finland or Poland. Uh, in, in terms of organized crime as a whole, trafficking in human being, it's not a big problem uh, in Sweden uh, if you compare it with narcotics or, or um, uh, other organized crime activities. Uh, but I'm sure that the problem would have been much bigger if we hadn't developed this approach to fighting the problem in, in time, because we started in time, I will say. Um, the, the trafficking unit in Stockholm work in Stockholm County area. And uh, it's uh, definitely sure that the, the, the trafficking groups are connected with international organized crime. And uh, uh, we work with surveillance and we work with investigations. And the investigators, they are traveling all over Europe in order to collect evidences and make interrogations. So uh, the, the members of, 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 of the trafficking units, the investigators, they have traveled a lot. And we have also figured out that it's important to spread the knowledge and spread the, the information in, in this topic in order to, 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 to try to, to reach the same, the same way of looking upon this problem. So therefore, I'm especially glad to be here. Uh, we, we want you to do the same thing as the Norwegians has, of course, because, because if we look upon this problem with the same eyes, it would be much easier to fight this, this type of organized crime. Trafficking groups in Sweden, they work with the motto, best profits to the lowest risk, and they are working as a traditional 
mafia and they all always work with the best profits to the lowest risk that's their motto of course um, and generally speaking as you know maybe trafficking in human being is one of the three largest type of crime of the world but it's not the lar one of the three largest types of crime in Sweden uh, of course um, we, we, we try to work, when I, when I was head of investigation in, in Stockholm, we, tried, we, we, we were involving the investigators and the prosecutors uh, together with the surveillance unit from the first day. Because uh, before the surveillance unit, and I think it's the same all over the world, unfortunately, the surveillance group, they are working with the, their case. And when they are finished, they hand it over to the investigators. And the investigator, they say, oh, they missed this and that and blah, 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 blah. And we need more evidence. And then the investigator do their case and they hand it over to the prosecutor. And the prosecutor will say, okay, they have missed a lot. Uh, and that's a problem. And that's not a good uh, way of, 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 of uh, uh, spending our tax resources. So we we had uh, uh we, we started with a, a different approach and now we have this approach uh always when we are working with, with with crimes actually so we involve the investigators and the prosecutors from day one in the case and we do it and 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 every kind of of different criminal activities on, in my division today it's more effective and uh, ev every, everyone will have the investigation in court for their eyes. So the surveillance group, they will say, okay, I do this because I know what we, we, we be, will be needed in court. And we, we try to minimize the, 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 the investigation so it will be perfectly all right for a good conviction. Uh, of course, we uh, involve advanced technology such as telephone tapping, camera surveillance, email intercepts. Suspects and victims very often speak different language and it's re requiring a lot of translation work and it's very, very expensive. It's very expensive with the translation work and you have to, to have that in mind. Uh, and every investigation costs a large amount of money. The trafficking group in, in Stockholm uh, contains uh, two groups of surveillance. There are 12. And I have the. Uh, if they require more personnel, they can come to me and ask for one or two more groups working with them. Then there is an investigation group, 10 persons. Uh, the group have three to five big cases every year which go to trial. And then you have a several small cases between 50 and 60. Uh, so it, it takes a lot of time making the, the, the investigations and uh, it's involved a lot of people. And um, if you compare the, 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 the investigators and, and the, the, the police work with other kind of police work, uh, you can say that it's not so much but it's very heavy. It's very heavy material and it requires a lot of money and a lot of resources. In the, the legislation then, if you if purchase of sexual services in Sweden, it's a fine up to one year in prison. Today, no one has been sentenced to prison. In Sweden, we are a little bit too liberated when we are talking about punishment, I think, as a police officer. Uh, I would prefer having someone in, put into prison uh, by, by today, but unfortunately there have just been fines. Controlling uh, and serious controlling, procuring, you know the word, pimping. For pimping you can have up to four years and serious pimping two up to eight years and trafficking in human beings two up to ten years. And from my point of view and from my experience, I don't think there's a difference between trafficking, prostitution, and I don't think there's nothing, there's nothing such voluntarily prostitution. I will say that everyone 
in prostitution are forced. Everyone are forced from inside because of their history and their, their background or forced outside from, from, uh, from trafficking groups uh, by violence, forced by violence. So everyone in prostitution are forced. In Sweden it's illegal buying sex but not selling sex. And some, buy, some, some maybe think that it should be illegal selling as well, but we see the prostitute as a victim. We see this is a, this is a gender issue from a Swedish perspective. It's not all right, it's not proper that you should buy a, another person for sexual reasons. It's not an agreement between two equal people from a Swedish perspective. Uh, I would say that we have decreased the number of prostitutes in Sweden thanks to this legislation. Uh, we have decreased it uh, absolutely. Uh, as I said, during the 70s we had, uh, we had 3,000 in prostitution in Sweden. In Stockholm today, if you go out on the street this evening, you will find between 5, maybe 10 girls in street prostitution. Five, maybe ten, in one street. We don't have a red light district in Stockholm. And if you go and, and search for the indoor prostitution the, or the internet prostitution, you will find between 80, maybe 100 girls. Uh, and it's easy to find them. So uh, the, the arguments that it says that, okay, the, the prostitution went underground when you developed this approach. It's not true, because if the customer want the girls, they will find the girls. And if they find the girls, the police will most definitely find the girls as well. So uh, there's no, no problem in order to, to find the, the, the customers and find the people who are running this business, the pimps, the, 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 the people behind. Uh, we have... We have co we, the situation is under control, and it's a, it's 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 a trouble today for the for the trafficking groups and for the people in prostitution to have customers. We can see that from intelligence and from uh, from uh, surveillance work that, uh, for example, people uh, arriving from Eastern Europe in order to to uh, to um, sell sell girls on, uh, in Stockholm, they, they don't have a market today. There's not enough customers and it's too dangerous because they, are, uh, they can go into trouble with, with the justice. So they, they, they think it over more than one time before they enter the Swedish border and start uh, with, with the prostitution. Uh, and and that's, that's very good. Um, so I, I would say that the number of prostitutes has actually absolutely uh, decreased. Then, then some people, some debaters, they are making criticism that it has been more dangerous now than it was before. But we will say we have, there is no statistics, no figures that shows that, that it's more dangerous now than it was before. Because it's very, very dangerous being in prostitution even if it's legal or illegal. It's always, you will always uh, end up in your life earlier than a, a, a person who is not in prostitution. Uh, but, but I can say that the last time we had a murder that we can say definitely it was connected because she was prostitute. It was in 1989, 22 years ago. 22 years ago. So it's not more dangerous, even though it's dangerous, of course. So I don't, I don't agree with with uh, with the uh, people that says that uh, that uh, uh, it have been more dangerous or 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 um, uh, in prostitution. I will say that it is possible to fight against trafficking in human beings and you should start with the buyers because with no buyers, with no customers, there will be no people serving them with girls. 
Prostitution and trafficking in human beings is one part of organized international crime. And no one goes into prostitution voluntarily. It's absolutely a modern form of slavery. And that's all, I think. Thank you for your attention. And uh, I give the floor to Patrick. Thank you so much.